three. All right, this is the first probability section that you guys did, and I want to go over any questions that you might have on this. And then again, we'll go over the second section tomorrow. Okay, so number one was one of those ones where you did one variable stats of list one with list two's frequency. And once the calculator gave you the standard deviation, it asked for the variance. So C is the trick answer. It's not C, because that one, 1 1.2 was the standard deviation. See, the standard deviation was 1.2 or 1.19. You had to square that to get 1.4. All right, on number two, we had to add up the males and then also include the two or fewer. So you could do this a couple different ways. You can add up this 50 here plus this 19 right here. That's what I did. I just added all of those sections up another way. The way the formula is, is probability of A was 50 over 100, probability of B was 36 over 100, but you had 17 of those double counted, so you subtracted the double counted part. For a final answer of 69 over 100, which was D. All right, number three, they said that these two events are independent. And so, if those two events are independent, the probability of one of them and the other one happening, and is multiplication, so the probability of them both happening, you can just multiply. It came out to 0 0.0672, but you rounded it to 0 0.07. Okay. On this number four, you had to assign the correct number of digits. A is close. A is close because, uh, but it's missing zero. It did not have enough assigned to the tails. Um, e is correct because it has three digits assigned to heads and seven digits assigned to tails. Okay, number five. This is considered discrete probability because do you see how there's like no intermediary values you could get? The only values you could get are 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. So this is the type of probability that's considered discrete. All right. But anyway, all those probabilities, if that's all that can happen, have to total up to 1. So I just would add all those up that are there, subtract from 1, and find what's missing. And that ended up being 17 over 120. Okay, next, this one's the law of large numbers. So if you do many trials, many, many trials, the cumulative probability, it will settle down to the true probability, the law of large numbers you see. So 100 times is not many trials, many, many trials, like infinity trials. And then, of course, just a few is not enough. So over time, the proportion of successes approaches the true proportion. So two is good. That's the definition of the law of large numbers. All right, moving on. So number seven said, which of the following represents probability? That someone who works full time. So that's the given that. That means given that someone works full time, then what's the probability that he or she has more than 5,000 credit card debt? So the only one that has that given that condition is D. Number eight, top 7%. Do we ever get our Z score by, if I did inverse norm of 0.07? That's the bottom 7%. So it is inverse norm of the area below, which is 93%. And then the score equation to solve for x. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I bet you I had to look this one up because, I, I mean, this wasn't <laughs> just something that I talked about much. So I probably looked this up. So there you go. Here's let's learn this definition that the individual outcomes of a random experiment are called these simple events. 
I mean, I probably could have guessed that. I might have wondered if it was, when am I, I don't think it'd be called random events, but I could see that being my next choice. Okay, here we go. So, give um, a heart or a jack. So, that's the probability of a jack plus the probability of the heart minus the overlap. There was one jack heart. So, 16 over 52 was 4 thirteenths. Now, I think this number 11 might be kind of biased if you don't know what this language of ace and double fault is. So let me kind of explain. It's probably the same as in, do they ha use that same language in volleyball of the ace and the double fault for the serves? Do you do double fault for, I don't know, maybe I just don't have those, so I don't know. Okay, so an ace, of course, would mean you serve the ball and then you just totally smash it and they, they it gets past them. So you aced it and you got you were successful on the first serve. A double fault means that you did a serve and it messed up. So it was out of bounds or it, it hit the net, right? That's bad too. A missed serve. Okay. So then a double fault means not only did you miss serve the first time, but you also miss serve the second time. So you faulted on both serves. And then so that happens. Um, that's another possibility. Those two things cannot happen at the same time. What do we call events that cannot occur at the same time? Not independent. Independence, one doesn't change the other. Like you could get a tails on a coin and a one on a die. And those are independent events. See, those can happen at the same time. What happen, What cannot happen at the same time? Disjoint. So knowing that these events were disjoint, then you would know that this probability has no overlap with this probability. And then the remainder of everything else is the rest of it up to 100%. So that was the key there on that one, that those were non-overlapping events. Okay, here's another one variable stats of list one with list two's uh, frequency. And so you get answer D. All right, number 13 did not have the correct answer as an answer choice. So here is the correct answer. X is zero was 0 0.7. One goes with 0.15. Two goes with 0.1. And three goes with 0.05. Okay, so those were your correct probabilities that were not an option. Okay, moving on. So here on this one, there's a couple of ways you could do it. The probability of rolling at least one six on a pair of die, so that's two of them. Okay, so you can list all the combinations, but on two it's not so bad. Listing all the combinations is not fun. So you could go not a six and a six plus six and a not a six. So there's one combination, another combination, or both not six. So you could list those three things out. Or you say, oh, probability of at least one. Listing all the combinations is not fun. Probability of at least one. Easier with one minus the probability of none. And the probability of none means that both of these die, uh, dice tosses are, neither one of them are a six. So neither one of them are a six. So this one's not a six and this one's not a six. Independent events, so they just multiply. And that comes out to 11 out of 36. All right, moving on. So this one had a four-sided die and a five-sided die. Here was the four-sided die. Here was the five-sided die. And all of the sums are in the middle. See, one on that face, one on that face made a sum of two. So that's how this chart read. So what's the probability that you have a sum of five. So there are four times that you could have a sum of five out of the 20 possible sums that reduces to one-fifth. 
which wasn't there. But I told you all that, so. All right. Here is, we have those same two die, a four-sided die and a five-sided die. And we want a probability that at least one of them is a three. So I've highlighted here the scenarios. Either this die right here is a three or this die right here is a three. Okay, so we've got either one of those scenarios. So you can, by hand, looking at this, say, okay, well, there it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ways that you could have one of those die being a three. That's eight out of the 20. But of course, seeing this at least one makes me go, Oh, okay, hold on, at least one, that's a trigger word, and I start singing probability of at least one. Easier with one minus the probability of none. So neither of the dice is a three. Okay, neither, so one minus probability that none of the dice are a three. I don't know all of my um, tenses on there, so I'm just getting all mixed up with it, but anyway, don't analyze that. So what's the probability that this die up here is not a three? Three-fourths. So that's this here. That's that die not being a three. And then the probability that this die over here on the side is not a three is four-fifths. So that's four-fifths is the probability of that die not being a three. So for neither one of them to be a three... That's none of the dice being a three. You have three-fourths times four-fifths, which is three-fifths. That's one minus three-fifths, which is, ta two-fifths. Okay? So there was two different ways to think about that. All right. This one, that bar should go up to 75 because the other represent 25% of the data. Okay, any questions on those so far? All right. <clears throat> now, on this one, it is not necessary that the mean be zero and the standard deviation be one. You can have a normal curve that is not normal around zero and one. That's called a standardized normal curve. And it doesn't have to be a standardized normal curve. Um, and number three is uh, the true one. Okay. 19 is a repeat question about the law of large numbers. So unless you want me singing that one again, we'll skip it. All right, and here we go, number 20. So we have an unfair die because some of the parts happen more off, uh, are more likely they are weighted heavier than the others. So I'm going to first keep track of the weight of those events. So... I'm going to put a weight of one for that odd and twice as much, so two parts for an even. Another one part for an odd and two parts for an even. One part for an odd and two parts for an even. That's a total of nine parts to make up all of the representations there. So then I know that that's one ninth and two ninths and so on. Probability. Is this a continuous distribution? What is this called, this kind of distribution? It's where you, you, you can't have all, you don't have all the little parts in the middle. You only have, the only options are a one or two or three or four or whatever. This is called discrete probability because you have that finite set amount of options. Okay. All right. Here we go. Probability is between 0 and 1 inclusive. Sums up to 1, and it is not success to failures. That's actually called odds. Success to total possibilities is your probability. And here was another normal curve probability problem, knowing that 82nd percentile is the area below. So inverse norm of the 0.82 is the z at that spot, and then you set that up with your z curve or z score formula and solve for x. 
All right. Again, here's another one, which a normal probability distribution does not have to be centered at zero with the standard deviation of one. It can, that's a standardized normal curve. Uh, two is true. Three is not true because the total area is one. The total area under a chi-squared curve is one. The total area under a T-curve is one. All right, and then 24, another one of those one variable stats of list one with list two's frequency. And finally, our given that question. Given that you've had two kings and two queens drawn out of the deck, means you had four taken out, leaving you with 48 cards in the deck. And of those 48 cards in the deck, two of them are a queen. So two out of 48 is the probability of getting a queen. All right, that's the end of the multiple choice part four of our review, okay, which was the first probability. So we're going to go over pages 100 to 109 tomorrow in class, then quiz Wednesday um, over parts four and five.